Every year, over 2 trillion liters of gasoline are consumed worldwide. To meet this colossal demand, oil companies work tirelessly to extract more than 90 million barrels of crude oil daily. But have you ever wondered how gasoline is actually produced? How is it possible that a thick, dark, and seemingly dirty liquid like crude oil ends up becoming a fuel capable of powering millions of vehicles? Well, today we'll travel to the United States, home to one of the largest oil refineries on the planet, where over a million liters of gasoline are produced every hour. So, get ready, because you're about to discover how the world's most used fuel is mass-produced. Let's begin. Step number one, crude oil extraction. It all starts several kilometers beneath the Earth's surface, where gigantic crude oil reserves are hidden. This thick, dark, and valuable liquid, known as black gold, formed millions of years ago when marine organisms' remains were buried on the ocean floor and transformed by time, pressure, and heat. To reach it, major oil companies deploy enormous drilling rigs capable of excavating more than 5,000 meters, over 16,000 feet, deep in search of this energy resource. Once a reserve is located, high-pressure pumping systems kick into action, sucking the crude from the depths through reinforced pipelines, slowly pushing it to the surface. Each of these wells can extract up to 1,000 barrels of oil per day, which is approximately 70,000 liters of gasoline, enough to fill the tanks of over 1,500 automobiles. After extraction, crude oil can follow two paths. In many cases, it's temporarily stored in special barrels and transported in enormous tanker ships to refineries. In other cases, it's channeled through pipelines, huge pipes that span thousands of kilometers until they reach the refineries where the real process begins, transforming this thick, dark liquid into one of the world's most used fuels. Step number two, arrival at the refinery and distillation. With thousands of liters of oil arriving at the refinery, the first major step in its transformation begins. At this point, the oil is a viscous, dense substance full of impurities. So, before becoming fuel, this thick liquid needs to undergo an intense process of heat and separation to extract only what's truly useful. First, the crude passes into enormous distillation towers, where it's heated to temperatures exceeding 350 degrees Celsius, 662 degrees Fahrenheit. When it reaches such high heat, the oil separates into different parts as each component evaporates at a distinct temperature. Lighter compounds, like liquefied petroleum gas (LPG), rise to the top of the tower, while heavier ones, like diesel or asphalt, remain at the bottom. Right in the middle of the tower appears what we're interested in, the gasoline fraction. At this stage, gasoline is still in vapor form, so it must be carefully cooled until it condenses into a liquid. Once ready, it's collected in large stainless steel tanks, ready to advance to the next level. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. This gasoline is still far from being the one that ends up in your car's tank. It still contains impurities, unstable compounds, and residues that could damage any engine. That's why now it's time to clean it, enhance it, and refine it to make it truly functional. Step number three, fuel cleaning and enhancement. With the basic gasoline now obtained, we reach one of the most important moments of the process, cleaning it and enhancing it to the maximum. This might sound very technical, but in reality, it's about preparing this gasoline to run powerfully, efficiently, and without damaging the engine. The first step is hydrodesulfurization, a chemical treatment that acts like a filter. Here, impurities such as sulfur, heavy metals, and unstable compounds are removed, as they could cause engine problems or increase polluting emissions. And once the gasoline is clean, it moves on to the most complex and fascinating process of all, catalytic cracking. At this point, the fuel once again faces extreme temperatures near 500 degrees Celsius, about 930 degrees Fahrenheit, inside a special reactor. There, the larger, heavier gasoline molecules are broken down into smaller, lighter, and much more explosive ones. These new molecules are what truly burn powerfully when the engine ignites the spark. The result is more potent, cleaner, and better performing gasoline. With the gasoline now purified and enhanced, it's very close to being suitable for millions of vehicles worldwide. Step number four, final engine optimization. At this point, the gasoline is clean and enhanced, but a crucial adjustment is still needed to bring it to its maximum performance level. The goal now isn't just for it to work but to achieve the best possible performance from each engine. 
This is where a process called catalytic reforming comes into play, and its main objective is to improve fuel quality by increasing its octane rating. And what is octane? Simply put, it's a measure of how well gasoline resists compression inside the engine. The higher the octane, the smoother and more efficient the engine's operation will be, without jerking, knocking, and with greater power. During this stage, the gasoline is heated again to high temperatures, while special catalysts are applied to rearrange its molecules. It's as if those small molecules obtained in the previous step are strategically ordered to withstand engine pressure and get the most out of every drop. Thanks to this, the engine generates more power while consuming less fuel. And now, with this final optimization, the gasoline is practically ready for vehicles. But one last step remains, mixing it with special additives to protect the engine, improve combustion, and make it as safe as possible. Step number five, final blending. With the gasoline now refined and its octane rating just right, it's time for the finishing touch. Thousands of liters of fuel are transferred to enormous blending tanks, where they are combined with special additives that make all the difference. Each additive has a specific purpose. For example, detergents prevent residue from forming inside the engine. Antioxidants help ensure the gasoline doesn't degrade over time. In addition, special compounds are added to reduce polluting emissions, adapting to each country's environmental regulations and each manufacturer's quality standards. Operators carefully pour these additives in precise quantities, following specific formulas for each type of gasoline. Everything is designed to guarantee optimal performance and maximum engine protection. And if you've ever wondered why gasoline has such a strong, characteristic smell, the answer lies right here. That recognizable aroma comes from certain volatile compounds added at this stage, which help keep the fuel stable and facilitate engine starting. With this final blend, the gasoline now has everything. Power, efficiency, cleanliness, and durability. But before reaching your vehicle's tank, it still has one last test to pass. A rigorous quality control that ensures every drop meets the high expectations of a premium fuel. Step number six, quality control. Before leaving the refinery, every batch of gasoline must undergo exhaustive quality control. Batches are taken to specialized laboratories, where expert technicians analyze samples to verify that they meet all requirements. Octane rating, purity, stability, and performance. This step is crucial, because it doesn't matter if you're fueling up in Mexico City or Madrid. The performance and power must always be the same. To guarantee this, extremely rigorous tests are performed. First, the octane rating is measured with equipment that simulates an engine running under pressure. They also evaluate how the fuel evaporates at different temperatures, its resistance to oxidation, and even the residue it leaves when burned. And that's not all. Then, real-world engine tests are conducted, where the gasoline is subjected to demanding conditions, cold starts, sudden accelerations, and prolonged loads, just as it would experience on the open road. Even a small impurity could cause engine failures and affect millions of vehicles. Therefore, absolutely nothing is left to chance at this stage. Only when it passes all tests is that batch officially approved and ready to be stored and distributed to thousands of gas stations worldwide. Step number seven, storage and distribution to gas stations. With all controls passed, the gasoline is now ready to leave the refinery. Each approved batch is stored in enormous sealed tanks, designed to prevent evaporation and maintain its quality intact. From there, it's transported in tanker trucks or through high-capacity pipeline networks, which deliver it to distribution centers and service stations across the country. Once it reaches its destination, the gasoline is transferred directly to the underground tanks at gas stations, where it's ready to be pumped into vehicles. One of these tanks can hold over 40,000 liters, approximately 10,500 gallons of gasoline, enough to fill more than 800 car tanks in a single day. And there you have it, the complete journey of gasoline, from the extraction of crude oil deep within the earth to the exact moment each drop enters your car's tank. Every time you refuel, you're using energy that took thousands of years to form underground, just so you can travel hundreds of kilometers today. To conclude, tell us, did you imagine this entire process? Are you someone who prefers gasoline, or do you stick with diesel? Let us know your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to not miss the next factory tour.